Our next guest is John Fain. Um, John Fain broadcaster, journalist and former lawyer. Um, but before John takes to the podium, I just would like to um, uh, recite this preamble. John, anything you say or do may be used in evidence against you. You may communicate with or attempt to communicate with a legal practitioner. And there are many here tonight. <laughs> Two days ago, on December the 7th, the United States State Department released the following information. The United States is pleased to announce that it will host UNESCO's World Press Freedom Day event in 2011, from the 1st of May to the 3rd of May in Washington, D.C. UNESCO is the only UN agency with the mandate to promote freedom of expression and its corollary freedom of the press. The theme for next year's commemoration will be 21st century media, new frontiers, new barriers. <laughs> the United States places technology and innovation at the forefront of its diplomatic and development efforts. New media has empowered citizens around the world to report on their circumstances, express opinions on world events, and exchange information in environments sometimes hostile to such exercises of individuals' rights to freedom of expression. At the same time, the US State Department says, we are concerned about the determination of some governments to censor and silence individuals and to restrict the free flow of information. That is not a chaser stunt. <laughs> it is an official US State Department press release. The hypocrisy is overwhelming. How can anybody in power or authority avoid the inevitable embarrassment of what they are now doing? To me, WikiLeaks and Monsieur Assange's, as he prefers to be called, I'm told, somewhat pretentiously, uh, predicament is pure and simple about free speech. I'm mindful of my responsibilities as an employee of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to maintain an even-handed approach to anything that is party political. And so contrary to the temptations succumbed to by Julian, Peter, and perhaps yet to come from Spencer, I'll try and steer clear of such controversy. I'm sure those who are looking for a point of criticism would love to find an excuse to undo the extraordinary coalition of people, for instance, in this room, if you look around you, who are all finding it necessary to express their concern. China has been roundly condemned by the United States, Britain, the European community, Australia, the rest of what calls itself the free world for its continuous efforts to censor the internet. I think it even agitated Rupert Murdoch at some stage. But surely what's happening here is pure and simply a journalist getting a darn good yarn and making the most of it using whatever technology, whatever platform is available. In this instance, it's WikiLeaks and the internet. Julian Assange has not stolen this information. It's like someone dropping off the proverbial brown paper envelope at the ABC South Bank Studios for me, and I invite you all and encourage you all <laughs> to do so far more frequently than you're doing now. Any journalist or editor worth their salt would do exactly what he is doing. Anyone who pretends to live up to the most basic skeleton of journalism and its ethics would precisely do this, and again, and again, and again. Indeed, the editors who are on the one hand publishing criticism of WikiLeaks, whilst on the other hand republishing its content are having a bet each way, with the cash registers ringing whilst they tut-tut and condemn 
from the lofty heights usually of their editorials. I say nothing of the charges in Sweden. Indeed, I suspect everyone in this room would agree that we respect the jurisdiction, we respect its independence, and whatever proceedings are to take place there will take place there. And if we don't trust Geoffrey Robertson to look after it, well, for goodness sake, <laughs> what's going on? But as I look around tonight at this cross-section of people, I'm convinced the backlash has begun. Young and old, techo or not, suits or sandals, this issue cuts across many traditional divides. It agitates, irritates and causes anxiety to people from every part of society. The link between democracy and technology fascinates me. I'm a firm believer in democracy, indeed I'm rather fond of it, and if you've ever seen the alternatives, you would be too. I believe technology can be a great driver for democracy. And indeed, I suspect that's what's behind WikiLeaks' very reason for existence. The alternative, of course, is journalists in Russia who disappear regularly because they dare report the truth in Chechnya. President Mugabe has a great way of dealing with journalists who irritate and confuse him, as do many dictatorships across the world, from the Middle East to Africa to Asia, you name it, even, of course, Uncle Fidel in Cuba, who doesn't really like being held up to scrutiny or for accountability either. But one of my great concerns about this entire episode is that the actions of our and other governments in relation to WikiLeaks fuels and feeds the conspiracy theorists who are constantly telling us we can't trust our elected representatives. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I like to think that we can trust them. And then an episode like this comes along and even the most ardent fan of democracy has their faith in the institutions of state, the rule of law and all the rest of it shaken to its very core. China have recently announced a new prize for global democracy and peace. It's called the Confucius Prize and they're promoting it as an alternative to the Nobel because a Chinese democracy activist has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Is this the future? Is this the fragmentation of the instruments of global democracy? Is this where it starts to fray at the edges? Well, I see this as a litmus test, a line in the sand. And if people, well-minded people, people who care, don't do something, it will, I believe, leave an indelible stain on democracy and we will never get back that which is so precious to us. So I salute you all for caring enough on only a 10 days before Christmas to come out on a sultry evening to show that you care. And where it goes from here, I think will affect all of us for the rest of our lives, our children's lives and beyond. Thank you.